Okay. So you go ahead, take your break. Sounds um, good. I'm going to first make sure that I have the chat stream. I'm sticking my butt in the camera right now. Um, oh, Hangout Toolbox. There we go. So welcome to my kitchen, everyone. Uh, yes, we do have an ant on the wall. I'm quite proud of our ant. Um, we are going to make perfect chocolate moments. Um, cake pops that look like planets. If I do it halfway right, I, I may not do it even vaguely halfway right. Um, but it's, it's a goal. So what we have, ah, sorry, still getting everything together here. Um, there we go. There's my stream. Okay. I now have the stream coming up. Yeah. Turn on the lights. And I now have all the lights turned on. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I have a very hot, I'm going to bring the camera over. Here's the drunken part of the show that is actually quite sober. I have laid out on my kitchen a Bella cake pop maker that is too hot for me to pick up and show you right now. I also have popsicle sticks that you can buy at Michael's, a non-stick cream, a non-stick spray rather, a bunch of sprinkles because I like to brew fields. And then over here, I have the goods, the uh, melted candy. These are from Candy Coins that you can also get at Michael's. These are designed to make candy. Um, and we're going to use those to make planetary shells. And then we have chocolate and cake batter over here. Now, I'm going to have to work somewhat quickly because as I talk, that candy filling is working to melt. So. My kitchen was not designed for much cooking, let alone much cooking show. Um, so I'm actually using a desk that's in our kitchen. I'm not sure why we have a desk in the kitchen because we could sure use more kitchen counters. So anyways, the way this works, you make your cake batter and inside the cake pop machine, um, I can cook six cake pops at once. And I'm Continuing to cut my head off. Huh. And that's my dog. Welcome, Leah, to the show. Okay, here we go. So I'm getting a spoon so that I can ladle the cake pops in. So I have my trusty ladle. Okay, so I've now put the cake dough into the little containers. Of course, as soon as I did that, I realized I didn't spray them with Pam. Um, so this may be a particularly interesting group of cake pops. If this set fails, I will make a different six. I'm going to get a spoon so I don't make this, so I can get them out halfway well. I'll use this. Okay, so I got a bowl. And I'm going to put the cooked cake pops in the bowl. Now, our goal doing this is we're going to end up with small, round popsicles of cake, essentially. And using those small, round balls, planets, if you will, we're going to give them a candy shell using the melted candy bits. And think of it as the mantle to the cake pops. Um, or the crust is, is more accurate. Uh, so we have the crust for the cake pops, and then we can paint on whatever features we want. You go on Pinterest, I have pinned some amazing cake pops that are made with blue candy that I wasn't able to find at our Michaels. Um, and painted on with the blue candy are green continents that look amazingly accurate. Um, so, we have a Richard back. I'm not quite sure why we have a Richard back. He's waving hello. Okay. Um, 
So we check on them. It usually beeps when they're done. I completely overfill a few of them. It's like that morning when you overfill the waffle maker with your first thing of waffles because you forgot how much to put in. So this is the slow part. It's the waiting for the cake. Now, cake pot makers come in varieties of different cake making sizes. And one really neat thing that I saw, my dog thinks that my hand, I have a deaf dog who thinks my hand gestures at the camera are me calling her, but I've already washed my hands to cook, so I, I can't give the dog any attention. Um, anyways, um, so one interesting thing I saw is you can make the cake pops using your normal cake pop maker, and then you can get a round um, cake pan, like a really big round cake pan like you might use to um, I mean, they brought ice to show things quickly. Um, like you might use to make a uh, black velvet cake. A nice round cake will allow you to do half the sun. So then you can have this beautiful glowing sun and then have the earth next to it or other planets next to it. You could alternatively do a big beautiful earth and then do the moon orbiting around it. Now, one of the neat things, if you do make that larger cake, and we'll be linking to this, and I should already have it linked into my Pinterest. So if you go to Star Strider on Pinterest um, and look at my scientific food board, um, if you make that earth, that big earth, not the cake pop earth, you can layer different types of cake and actually recreate the geology. So imagine a kid's school party where everyone comes over uh, for a birthday or, or some other type of event that you want to make special. You make this beautiful planet cake, and when they cut into it, they get to learn geology. Now, I'm going to pull these out ever so carefully, having completely overfilled the first couple. Okay, rejected planets. I have a binary planet here. The rejects are always fun to eat later. So I'm dropping in my planets didn't come out completely round, they actually came out slightly deformed, but that's okay, I'll call them asteroids. So my particular cake pan will make six planets at a time. I'm going to get the next six started while those cool. Huh? That's right. This will be the most delicious and perhaps also the most boring segment of this show. But then you'll get to see us with a sugar high. So right now I'm starting another six of these. I'm only going to make these two sets. Now I'm going to cheat. In order to help cool these off quick, more quickly, I have a bowl that has ice in it. I have a smaller bowl that I'm nesting inside. And that has allowed these to cool off so that I can already touch them. Now I'm going to just roll them around, roll them around. I'm doing this so that they can get um, more of their surface area exposed directly to the metal. Metal actually conducts heat more quickly which means the heat from the cake is going to flow, using thermodynamics, through the metal into the ice, melting the ice. Um, so if you try and put a wooden bowl floated on ice, that will do you absolutely no good, because wood doesn't conduct heat. I'm teaching you science while I play with my cake pop balls. There was no way to say that nicely. 
So I now have fairly cool. You want them to be room temperature, but I'm going to rush things because we're on TV, sort of. We're on Google Hangouts. Once they're cool enough, stab them onto your favorite little popsicle stick. I'm now going to move over to... <laughs> I'm loving watching my husband run away. Um, he's very determined not to be on camera. Um, yeah. Oh. So I'm going to hand my husband these sprinkles so that I can put debris onto these objects. Yeah. Okay. So I now have a cake pot stuck on a stick, and I'm going to make it. To start with, ah, that was hot. Yeah. I'm going to make it to start with, I'm going to dip it in chocolate. So um, I'm literally just dipping it in chocolate and I'm rolling it around. Now, one of the problems is it's very easy to accidentally poke your stick all the way through. This is going to be the part of the show that is also filled with accidental, um, yeah, everything's going to sound dirty. It's all in the name of chocolate. So if your chocolate is totally runny, you can dip it in and pull it out. See, that's what I'm talking about with the stick coming through. Um, if your chocolate is completely runny, then when you do this, you can just dip it and it comes back out and you worry about it dripping. This is just not quite hot enough to do that, ooh, and it's mint chocolate. Um, so right now, the reason I'm standing here holding it like this is if I move, it's falling off the stick. So I'm waiting for the chocolate on this to solidify. Now while I wait for it to solidify, I'm going to decorate it some. So I'm going to make this a brown something that has a green forested region on it. So I'm using a different popsicle stick to draw. So the trick with this is just like when you're painting and you end up mixing um, your paintbrush between different containers, you do need to clean it off so that you don't pollute things with the different colors. This is not cooling quickly. Our house is very warm today. This is one of those cooking things that may somewhat fail due to the temperatures. Yeah. So I'm going to keep holding this, and hope that it cools. Do, oh, there's styrofoam. OK. So I have a giant piece of styrofoam here. And I'm going to ask my husband to skewer some holes. Oh, there's one already in it. Um, OK. So I'm going to stab this in. Put it on the counter and hope it doesn't fall over. Ah, ah, I thought I was putting a piece of candy in my mouth. I was putting a piece of styrofoam in my mouth. Um, okay. Now I'm going to check the next set. One of the easiest mistakes you can make doing this is you burn the set that's cooking while you're decorating the prior set. Um, I managed not to do that, which is a refreshing change. So I'm now pulling out more. And I'm making sure I keep track of which were from the first set that are nice and cool and which are from the new set. So I have more not entirely round objects that I'm pulling out. The best way to get them so that they're actually round is to take a measuring spoon and do an experiment until you figure out exactly which one of your measuring spoons will create a perfectly round cake pot with the batter you have. Um, some batters rise more than others, and that's why you have to do the experiment. Um, the last time I made these, I figured out if I fill them two-thirds of the way, they come out perfectly round. This time, that's not quite working. Okay. So... You just keep doing this. You take the, the pot covered in cake. This one I'm going to make.